Hello everyone. It is news roundup day, which means we're talking about a bunch of news you already saw, but I want to talk about it too. And this is easier than doing news videos literally every time it comes out. So let's go over everything that happened last week in the world of Transformers, and that starts off this week with Target's Geek Out event, which is a buzzword someone in a boardroom came up with in order to just say, hey, geeks, come get your toys. Well, they debuted a few new Transformers for Buzzworthy Bumblebee, worthy talking about. I say brand new. The most exciting one seems to have been the Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime Leader Class, the first Leader Class toy for Buzzworthy Bumblebee. And apparently a lot of people are excited about this because it's just a straight up reissue of the previous studio series Optimus Prime with the wing pack and the trailer that forms the ring and everything. It was, yeah, a really, really hard toy to get. The aftermarket on it is nuts. So this should help a lot of collectors that are still trying to get a hold of this. Remember, this is also the one that has the additional parts that let it connect onto Jetfire for your super mode. So you have uh, a lot in this package that is, is desirable for a lot of collectors. So glad you have a second chance to get it. Don't have to go to the eBay scalper for it. That's always the most important thing. Completely closed off box, by the way, since that is what they do with every leader class now. Moving on, we have Nest Ratchet, which is just a, it's, it's a black repaint of Ratchet with no real variance to his color whatsoever. I find this to be incredibly dull. Like, yes, it's military vehicle, etc. Like, okay, I'm sure there's people who like this aesthetic. It just looks bland to me. It just looks bland. It's like, it's like someone just took... Like, it just looks like someone took a normal ratchet and just took all the saturation out of the image. That's that's what it looks like. It's meh. It's, it's, I, guess, I guess if you're collecting the nest figures, it'll go in with that. And then they did the same with Bone Crusher. Once again, uh, it's literally just all of his decal just taken down. Um, so you'll notice he actually, because nest vehicles are Autobots, it's actually labeled as an Autobot. Uh, during transformation, it was confirmed that there is a Decepticon symbol that appears. So you can see his true allegiance and that the idea is that he is undercover. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how. You look exactly like Bone Crusher, except you're gray instead of tan. And everyone is going to go, oh, oh, who's the new guy? Oh, man, he, he sure does look funny. Uh, <laughs> he sure looks like a funny Autobot. Looks really mean for an Autobot, too. Uh, it's just an excuse to repaint Bone Crusher. I would have preferred the jungle, like the green repaint that they did back in the day. Like that would have been nice to get in Voyager scale. But, you know, I guess it's it fills out the line. It lets them do a repaint, so whatever. If you like the aesthetic, good. Good on you. I just think it's a little dull. Uh, for something that is actually on the shelves right now, this came out of nowhere. Shadow Strip and Crasher. Uh, the brand new uh, deluxes for uh, Velocitron have already been cited in Canada. It's coming pretty quick. There's a lot of, like, it, it, I mean, it feels like that just dropped at Walmart. And now we're already, like, anticipating Wave 2. Wave 2 just being two deluxes, by the way. And I think, like, the most interesting thing about the Wave is the fact that it's two deluxe black Indy cars. I mean, I mean, one is the concept car, and then one is like a proper like F1 racer. But it's very weird and very rare of Hasbro to release two toys that are so similar to each other beside each other. But hey, it's uh, the beginning of new G2 Stunicons with new names, interestingly enough. And it is Crasher with an actual like Decepticon Crasher. She's got a real name. She's got a Decepticon emblem on her. She's uh, promoted to the rank of a real Transformer. So good for Crasher. I'm, I'm glad we finally get to see that name on a Transformer box. Uh, speaking of Transformer boxes, we actually got to see in-package shots of Earth Spark, and it is some pretty slick-looking packaging. It's avoiding all the... It's avoiding the crazy colors of the, uh, of the uh, Legacy line right now. It's a little bit more muted with, you know, with a lot of steel blue and dark purple. Looks really, really nice, and it's also like also like avoiding that uh, pitch black and red of Studio Series. So nice, nice middle ground here. I like it. I am getting a little bit tired of like the Transformer logo along the side here. Like I feel like that's been played out for a long time now. But yeah, packaging looking really good. Toys looking really, really good. Uh, so those little flip finger things, those are going to be in their own sealed boxes. 
Uh, we've got a few other, like, one step, etc. Typical stuff. It's on the open cards like they always have been. This one it feels so weird. This looks like, like, if this is, like, the packaging we're getting for, uh, if this is the packaging we are getting for, uh, Warrior Class, this is absurd. Look how much space is in that box. But you could fit three of those Optimus Primes on that card. I don't know what they are going for here. It just seems like a massive waste of material. Hasbro trying to be environmentally friendly. Uh, paper waste is a thing too, by the way, Hasbro. Uh, this seems like a massive waste of space on a retail shelf. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, Bumblebee gets an open box, gig gigantic box. It, it's nice looking packaging. It's nice looking packaging. So I'm looking forward to seeing that on a shelf sooner than later, hopefully. Moving on, uh, uh, Lanky Kong Prime got new pictures. So this is the Titan Changer. If you've been like a Walgreens, you see those super tall, super cheap looking transformers that actually do transform. That's what we got going on here. Uh, we've seen this toy before, but now we actually saw the beast mode and uh, the Lanky Kong comparison continues. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious how this toy kind of functions. Uh, there's some there's some elements to it. I cannot quite figure out how they work, which is what you want out of a toy like this. You know, keeps you uh, keeps it a little bit unpredictable, which is nice. Uh, I can't figure out where the beast mode legs come from. Like those big feet don't seem like they had anywhere to fold up, and it looks like there's no gap above them where they folded down. Kind of curious. Like it seems like like it's not the most like of course it's Optimus Primal. They're never gonna have a complex transformation. But it seems like it does a couple tricks for its uh, for for its budget range that are kind of impressive. So I kind of want to see how this thing works now. But you know, just in case you want to collect these uh, these less expensive giant figures, hey, you got one more to go after. All right, we have a sighting in Canada for the uh, Energon Escape two pack for Buzzworthy Bumblebee. Uh, well, this is again one of those like it was supposed to be Rise of the Beasts and they uh, had to delay that movie. So all the stuff that was already uh, coming out of the pipe, they just switch, switched it really quick to Buzzworthy Bumblebee. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's two Energon Igniters. It's two old Energon Igniters just repackaged. It's, uh, it's just a thing to have toys on the shelf that bear the movie's name. That's all it is. So it's, again, we're in that weird period where we're gonna get weird things like this. The Energon Igniters weren't that popular the last time. I remember these, most times I saw these, it was at like clearance stores. Like, I don't know how they're, I don't know how a reissue is going to go, but eh, I, I guess it's something else, something else for movie fans to buy. Uh, in hand shots of DK3 Breaker, and he sure does look like a Blue Trail Breaker. I understand wanting to get all these Diaclone releases out. That's all well and good, but man, I could have used some kind of twist in the deco. I could have used some different striping. I could have used some kind of something to kind of like uh, separate this from Trailbreaker. It really does look like they just ran the exact same figure with the exact same paint apps through the exact same factories, and all they did was change the black plastic to blue. It's it's disappointing looking like for diaclone collectors it's great okay you get one more for your diaclone collection but man it's just a lot of those diaclone toys were just variations in color and like minor variations so this mm, this does not work for me i don't know like i'm a little i loved my trail breaker but this i needed more i needed more for personally something that gives me everything i wanted though I say everything. I could use his actual hand cannons, but this is cool. We got our in-hand shots of Inferno, and I love in-hand shots more than I do the production ones because these are like real people who are really manipulating it and sometimes know what they're doing better than the photographers do because the photographer is just a paid intern to take photos. They don't know how to transform the transformer sometimes. I did a whole video about that. This one, yeah. Once it gets into the hands of a fan, yeah, that's when you see, like, really, really nice shots. So, yep, the full four pedals of his butt all extend and work. Uh, the thruster that becomes his actual handgun, the manic lap... He, man, the head sculpt on this thing looks absolutely perfect. He looks so good. Like, the maniacalness of him it comes across so well. Uh, yeah, I love, I love how this thing is turning out. Absolutely love it. Uh, let's see, the... Yeah, shots of the instructions if you want spoilers on how to transform it. Uh, 
already on the shelf, already on the shelf in China with Starscream. So that wave is like in the factories, shipping out. We might get that a lot sooner than we expected. There's the beast mode. Yeah, beast mode looking nice. Yeah, uh, uh, the nice thing is like, like I think the bulk of it helps a lot in making it like a little bit less discreet. Like it, it feels like like there's a lot of under the, the underside of this is loaded with robot kibble, but there's something about the bulk and the way this ant mode works that it doesn't show nearly as much as it does on some of these uh, Kingdom and Legacy Beast mode to Beast Wars toys. Really, really like how this is going. Really, really like how this is going. All right, moving on. Who has a lot of money to spend? All right. So this is by Agora Models, and this is a diecast metal model kit Optimus Prime. Here's this. Here's your, your stats. It is 31 inches tall. It is 15 inches wide. It is nine inches deep, uh, weighing in excess of 24 pounds of ABS plastic and diecast metal. This is an extreme model kit. This is about as crazy as you could get as far as a Transformer model kit goes. Display base is an optional bonus you can buy if you want the entire package. It is gonna cost you over $400 and you are going to have to wait a little bit to get it. Uh, they're spreading out the parts. It's like one of those like mail order like, it's like when you do a, like a mail order chess set thing and you get like two pieces a month you know until like the entire thing is you know until you have the entire thing in your collection you're gonna have to wait for each piece of this model kit to come in over the course of nine months so it's a long project for someone uh and a, a long expensive project he looks really good he is stylized he is stylized he's a little bit pat lee in how heavy his shoulders are compared to his body i like the stylization on this except for the horns on the helmet i feel like those fold back way too far like i'd like those to point forward i'd like those to point upward a little bit more but yeah it is looking phenomenal for the people who have that kind of money to drop on a model kit uh that you know a model kit that's over two feet tall by the way two and a, over two and a half feet tall like you know like we're yeah like we're talking like this is like a metroplex size model kit and like new metroplex not 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 original metroplex like it's big <laughs> it's really freaking big all right silly stuff time silly stuff so um super impulse which is uh super impulse i believe is it's the uh I believe, if I remember right, it's the company that produces all the world's smallest toys that you saw, like, the super tiny uh, Transformer figures in. Yeah, now they are putting their name out on imitation potato heads. They are calling Pop Taters. So they are trying to split the difference between a Funko Pop and a Mr. Potato Head with, basically, potato head toys with a ton of uh, celebrity accessories, a lot of pop, pop culture references. Anywhere between, you know, Bob Ross, Sonic the Hedgehog, the Big Lebowski, of all things. And yes, of course, Optimus Prime. Because I assume they had to license the concept from Hasbro, or else this was going to be, like, pretty big copyright infringement. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming that, yeah, I'm assuming that these are just, like, basically licensed Mr. Potato Heads that they also applied other licenses to. They have the switch and play pattern, so if you want Bob Ross rocking like like uh, like the Kiss like full stage armor look, you can do that. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a super odd one to actually produce, but hey, uh, oddballs can be fun too, and there's plenty of people out there who collect them. So go forth and enjoy your toy. All right. Um, the Apple Arcade Transformers game, Tactical Arena, has just announced there's a new trailer up that has announced Beast Wars characters are joining the game. Cheetor, Air Razor, and Optimal Optimus, which is an interesting choice considering, you know, it's Season 1 Cheetor, it's Air Razor, who never was in the presence of Optimal. Uh, yeah, if you are a fan of those tactical games, you have uh, you have a few more to play with. I'm not a tactical game guy. I'm also not a mobile game guy, so uh, I'm probably not going to experience this. Someone let me know how it is. Someone let me know how it is if you actually get to play this. Uh, something else that you have the option of playing, there is a new uh, augmented reality card game for Transformers out there right now. Drop them on a table, 
uh, let your phones bring them to life, watch them fight it out right there in front of you on your desk. Kind of a cool concept. Uh, all the cards for the game are uh, on full display. Um, interesting choices here. We got a lot of the standard characters, your Optimus, you know, your Megatron, Wheeljack, uh, Soundwave, Bumblebee, etc. We have a random Technobot in Nose Cone out of nowhere. Uh, not sure how he ended up here. Jetfire is a Decepticon, because apparently this is uh, going to be like... Apparently this is going to be like Cybertronian based. Even though Prime just kind of looks like a normal semi-truck. Uh, there's some weird choices going on here. Um, the one art... Oh, is it not in this? Oh, it's not in this news update. So, the one art that like caught me off guard that I was really taking a look at was uh, the new design on Cliffjumper. Because there's a little bit of hot rod in him, but it's not going toward like like so there's some yellow in his chest and some in uh and it, like a light gray instead of a black, so it doesn't strike me more as like cliff jumper, but like there's like actual like power links hot shot vibes in him, which is weird. It's weird. Also, I don't know why Bumblebee has such a boxy chest. <laughs> it's. There's some weird, it's all original designs and they're all very weird. So take a look, there's some interesting stuff in there. Uh, don't know if I'll ever get the chance to play it because I don't know if there's even like a plan for an American release. I assume it's in English, uh, English and Chinese. We will see. And to cap this off, I don't normally talk about third party stuff but I am genuinely like thrilled and impressed by this. Toy World is showing off their Shatter. And it's taken a it's they've done a lot of tweaks to it since the first time they showed this off. And I think it's definitely for the betterment of the toy. We see it in full color now, and we have a kind of an idea of what the final product is going to be. Um, the jet mode is like like okay, let's start. Like the robot mode looks beautiful. The robot mode looks absolutely spot on. Like, yeah, like there is right there your best villain in Transformers movies, right there. Uh, the card mode does look really, really good here. Uh, in this heavily photoshopped uh, uh, picture, um, I uh, I'll show you like the concern I have for it. The jet mode is the one to talk about because yeah, it's it's cluttered and kind of junky because it's hiding a lot of it's trying to hide a lot of robot and car parts underneath it, and it's only halfway succeeding at it. There's some obvious gaps, especially toward the tail. There's some obvious junk hanging out underneath the wing. Um, We'll get to that shot in a minute. Man, it looks so good. Oh, she looks so good. Uh, in this one, you can see a little bit more clearly, like my concern with the vehicle mode, the car mode as it is. Uh, you can see the hood especially has so many panel lines from where this toy has to be broken up so many times to fold away. That has me concerned because it looks like there is a ton of panels to this toy in order to make this work. So the transformation is might be physically possible, but it might not be desirable. Like that is my concern: is how hard is it to get this thing between its modes? And I think, I think with all the panel lines I see, it's going to be very hard. Uh, and then the jet mode, you can see, yeah, there's big junk hanging out underneath the wings. Uh, clearly, like just uh, not, you know, it's, you know, you know, it's not a fuselage. It's not the side of a jet. And then there's uh, here, you can see it better here. You can see a gap here, like right above the star on the wing. You look above that; that's a gap. Uh, where just like the top side of the tail section is just folded over some robot parts. Um, yeah, it's, we can at least admit it's doing a better job than Blitzwing did. And I will argue that that car is a harder mode to get into that jet than a tank is because it's not too bulky vehicle, uh, military vehicles. you you know, um, similar concept though. And similar resolution, just stuff stuff under the wings. Again, I don't think it looks as bad as Blitzwing. And I think the final product looks so good that I'm willing to let this jet mode be a little bit jank in order for this to be so nice. So, I'm actually excited for a third party toy. Mark your calendar. But thank you guys for joining me on another little news recap for the week. Exciting stuff, there's a lot of new stuff coming down the line, um, yeah. Lots of stuff to collect as always. And thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for watching another one of these videos. I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.